This is Saturn V, the rocket that will send three Americans toward the moon in Project Apollo. But this historic journey cannot be attempted without knowledge, knowledge based on experience. For the United States, experience came by seeking answers to certain basic questions. Could a human being withstand an eight-day flight to the moon and back? Could a man control the movements of his spacecraft, rendezvous and dock with another vehicle orbiting the moon? Could he leave the protective cover of his spacecraft and perform useful work in space? Could he function effectively as an experimenter and use spaceflight to advance human knowledge? Could the Apollo spacecraft be guided and controlled during re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere so it could make precision landings any place on Earth? If the answer to any of these questions was no, it had to be known before three men travel a quarter of a million miles to the moon. And so in 1961, the Gemini program came into being as the necessary prelude to Apollo. This is the story of Gemini and its legacy to spaceflight. On Gemini, training began on Earth and in the atmosphere. This specially designed airplane was flown hundreds of times on parabolic sweeps into the sky to provide the Gemini astronauts with brief periods of weightlessness. Here, seconds at a time, the difficulties of living in space were rehearsed. Working under zero gravity, the Gemini astronauts gained experience with the equipment and techniques they would soon take into space. It took hours of training under these rigorous conditions to develop the confidence needed for operating in the space environment. The Gemini astronauts took their equipment underwater. Balanced between sinking and rising, they learned to pace themselves as they performed tasks in a condition that simulated longer periods of weightlessness. In the translation and docking simulator, they got the feel of maneuvering their spacecraft into position for docking with another vehicle. In the Gemini mission simulator, they flew entire missions without leaving the ground. Here, they learned to react quickly and correctly to problems fed to them through computers. The Gemini astronauts exposed themselves to the stresses of the space environment. They trained for emergencies, learning how to react if things did not go exactly according to plan. Parachute training in case they were forced to eject from their spacecraft. Water survival for landings in the ocean. Survival in desert and jungle.
But ultimately, there was no substitute for being there. Gemini took the men and the tools and the problems into orbit. In the 18 months between March 1965 and November 1966, 10 manned missions were launched from Cape Kennedy. 16 astronauts journeyed to their spacecraft on launch pad 19. Virgil Grissom and John Young were first, then James McDivitt and Edward White, L. Gordon Cooper and Charles Conrad, Frank Borman and James Lovell, Walter Schirra, Thomas Stafford, Neil Armstrong, David Scott, Eugene Cernan and Michael Collins, Richard Gordon, Edwin Aldrin. Four of the Gemini astronauts made the trip twice. Together, these men helped thrust the United States into a new era of exploration. Gemini was a single concept with a number of assignments. It was, in a sense, one launch, one flight, one recovery. Stand by for 10 second countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, ignition. Lift off. Space is infinite. It yields slowly to exploration. In their voyages into this environment, the Gemini astronauts logged more than 1,940 man hours of flight. Hurtling through space at five miles a second, they circled the Earth 600 times. In their 40 Earth days in space, they witnessed, as few men have, hundreds of sunsets on the changing horizons of our planet. Sweeping over continents in a matter of minutes, they gained a new perspective of Earth. For Gemini, equipment and techniques were developed that enabled astronauts for the first time to maneuver their spacecraft, to change their orbit, to accelerate to new heights. The first Gemini maneuvers were basic, flying formation with the spent second stage of the Titan II rocket. Then a more difficult step, rendezvous, finding and approaching another craft in space. Okay, John R6, we're to copy. Okay, D8. 06-35-00, pass at Hawaii, Rev 4. The first target for rendezvous was another manned spacecraft. Gemini 6 approached within one foot of Gemini 7. Rendezvous, a major landmark in the history of manned flight. 
Aboard Gemini 7, astronaut Borman prepares to take motion pictures of Gemini 6 as the two spacecraft begin their station keeping exercise. And we have LOS also, both vehicles at Hawaii. Ten rendezvous were accomplished during the Gemini program. The techniques varied, for this maneuver is important to Project Apollo. The lunar module, on returning from the surface of the moon, must rendezvous and dock with the command and service module. In Gemini, conditions of lunar orbit were simulated in Earth orbit, and confidence for Apollo grew. On four of the Gemini missions, the rendezvous target was the Agena space vehicle. During the program, the Gemini astronauts located and docked with the Agenas nine times, developing experience and confidence in this important maneuver. This experience is vital to the lunar mission, for the Apollo astronauts will dock twice on their journey from the Earth to the Moon and back. As the spacecraft moved in, docking lights aboard the vehicle helped guide the pilot during the final stages of the maneuver. Okay, Gemini 8, it looks good here from the ground. Uh, we're showing tone rigid. Uh, everything looks good from the docking. Okay, uh, we're going to cycle our stop arm switch now. Uh, Roger. We flight, we are down. But not everything always went according to plan. On Gemini 8, a thruster failed, causing excessive yaw and roll. Unable to find the source of trouble, Command Pilot Armstrong undocked. The roll rate accelerated, reaching an alarming one revolution per second. But Armstrong fought and won his struggle to regain control, and he brought Gemini 8 to a safe landing. On Gemini 9, when an Atlas rocket failed to place the Agena into orbit, a substitute docking target was launched. Trouble developed on the new target when its shroud failed to separate, leaving what the astronauts quickly named the Angry Alligator. Although the docking maneuver had to be canceled, the flight plan was revised so the astronauts could go on to practice rendezvous two more times, developing faith in their ability to cope with adversity and to learn from the unexpected. On two missions, the Gemini astronauts actually assembled a new spacecraft in orbit, the combined Agena and Gemini. After docking, they commanded the Agena to restart its own rocket engine. On one mission, this space-built vehicle was flown to a record altitude of 851 miles. From their vantage point in space, the astronauts had a spectacular view of our planet. Although